The gaming revolution, Twitch, the live streaming platform owned by Arizona, Amazon, that is, uh, temporarily suspending President Trump's channel, citing hateful conduct. All right, let's bring in Rod Slasher Breslau. He's a professional esports and streaming consultant. Great to have you, Rod. Um, are you surprised by this? Is this a political move? Well, Twitch as a company, and from what I understand, this was based off of him re-airing the, uh, the rally from 2016 where he infamously called uh, Mexican immigrants rapists. And that, would, that specifically is the rally that was rebroadcasted for why they, they did this. Twitch internally as a company has tried to set themselves a little bit apart from Twitter or Instagram or Facebook, mm -hmm. where they want to treat the president of the United States, which is Trump right now, just like any other user on the website. Now, that's been like a contested issue from both the left and the right on social media websites. But at least for Twitch, they wanted to make sure that Trump is the same as Simple Order 69 as a random person uh, on the website and that they would suspend him in the same way they would anybody else. All right, we'll move on from that. Another one for you, Rod. With sports on pause, of course, because of the virus, people have been turning to esports to fill that void. They were already doing that by the millions before the virus. But in some strange way, has the pandemic increased the exposure of esports? I mean, yeah. I mean, esports is the only uh, sport out there in the world where you can play it online. That is where competitive video games, um, you know, got its growth to begin with. So with no one able to move across the country, competitive esports, competitive gaming has still gone on um, through all the major leagues. All the major leagues within one or two weeks were able to take their in-person events and then put them online. And we've had broadcasts and the games played professionally for the last few months. And they've even broken record viewership while doing that. So at the same time, you had something like NASCAR, which was able to put on their iRacing events when there wasn't a real NASCAR. Mm. And that really gave a, a sense of peace for a lot of NASCAR fans that weren't able to watch week after week. And then they, they're able to watch sim racing on TV. They really got into it and now are fans afterwards. Is there still plenty of room to grow for the esports gamers world? I mean, we're talking a lot of people. We're talking some really big money. I mean, is the sky the limit on, the, on this, uh, you know, this phenomenon is what I call it. I mean, yeah, these last few months have really been a big boom for professional gaming. But even with traditional mm. sports coming back, that is not going to hurt uh, the gamers at all. All the new fans that esports um, has gotten, whether it's Counter-Strike or League of Legends or Rocket League or simulated racing, is really going to transfer over to all those people that even when traditional sports comes back, they're going to keep watching gaming. Twitch and YouTube are bigger than ever before. Um, Richard Tyler Blevins Ninja is now making $40 million mm -hmm. off of a mixer uh, a mixer deal most recently. So competitive gaming and streamers overall are only going to continue to grow over the next few years. Just out of interest, and before we leave, Rod, do you play yourself? Are you competitive? Yes, I've been playing games myself for the last 20 years. Um, I mean, I've always been a gamer my, my whole life, and I don't really see that changing anytime soon. Um, I'm going to continue being in the industry and the niche that I love, and I'm, I'm really here to try to help make this mainstream a thing for everybody. Living the dream, as they say. Rod Breslau. Rod, thank you so much for joining us today. Really appreciate it.